Hello and welcome to the Phone Archive, a series in which I look at strange, weird and obscure phones from all around the globe for your entertainment and it's either going to entertain you or it's either going to bore you to death. It's probably going to bore you to death because a lot of people don't like the tech stuff. I like to have a look at tech stuff here and there between all the other videos and stuff. So it just sort of breaks up the routine. So anyways, hopefully this is going to be a short video. I hope. Anyways, this here. This is a HTC Desire from the year 2010. And although this is quite ancient now and the screen is completely shattered on it and it doesn't have a battery. See, no battery, because this is a faulty one, doesn't work. The good old Chinese decide to make a fake knockoff clone of this. Why? Because they could, why not? So, what I'm going to do today is show you that. Ta-da! It just looks the same, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Anywho, so here are the phones together. So the real HTC Desire has a 3.7 inch display, whereas the fake one looks more like a, th maybe a 3.3 inch, maybe a 3.4, maybe a 3.4 I'd say. It seems to have the same buttons, home menu, the optical trackpad, that is an optical trackpad on that one. I doubt it on this one. We have a back button, back button, and a little search button. But this doesn't run Android, I'm pretty sure of it. Basically, it's in the condition that I got it. When I bought it, I put a battery in, I switched it on to see what would come up at the start, and then I switched it back off, and I haven't looked at it since. So this is going to be a surprise for me as well. Anywho, there is a screen protector on this one, which I will probably peel off to make it a lot easier to see the screen, because you, you're going to stare at the screen with all the scratches in there. Um, one thing to note is that this one has a front camera, and this one does not have a front camera. So that's one thing that this improves on. Also, this one has Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi Mobile, which would be very interesting considering that most clones from around this generation do not have Wi-Fi. So we will have to see if it has Wi-Fi. So around the side, we have the volume buttons there. So you can see the plus minus there, a lot bigger on the real one than on the clone knockoff one there. But this one has like a metallic sort of frame, whereas this is all just plasticky cheapness. Um, the charge ports, Micro USB on the real one, and then a little microphone hole there, and a little microphone hole there on this one. This is a Samsung charger port. For the phones around this time, Samsung was using this, I think maybe a year beforehand, before actually switching to micro USB, but they were using this standard. So this HTC clone has a Samsung charger port. Whatever. But you'll see in a second why there's a, there's a it's a mishmash of phones. You'll see. So on the top, power button, which is right in the middle there, or sort of in the middle, and a 2.5mm headphone jack, whereas this one has a 3.5 and the power button's there. Basically looking the same. The frame's a little bit bent on this one, but meh. There you go. That's there. There's the camera. There's the flash. There's the flash. No speaker there. Speaker's down there, but it's exactly the same. Little holes there, move down. And yeah, has that little bump for the charger port so I can not stand up because I thought it would stand up. So it's funny to note that on this one, it says 8.1 megapixels for the camera, but on the real one, it is a five megapixel camera. So I wonder who will win the competition. This one all the way, shh. This one's probably gonna look like absolute garbage. I mean, they kind of, look, uh, whatever. We'll see in a second. Otherwise, you can see that this one is a lot thicker than this one here. Yes, you can definitely tell that they wanted to look the same, even down to the little piece speaker grill there. But when we open the back cover, we start to see something completely different. How does it open? There we go. Like so. Inside we find a Nokia BL4J battery. Uh, I think there was a BL5, not a BL5C, a BL5, I think a BL5J was originally in here, but it was swollen. So I replaced it with this one because I knew this one worked. It might be a little thicker. That's why the cover doesn't go back. Whatever. doesn't really matter. Anyways, it's upside down. There's the camera up the top there. It's a little nubbin. Probably does nothing at all. The LED flash would look, looks like a sticker, actually. Is it a sticker? Yeah, it actually does look like a sticker. So could be. Both IMEIs because we have dual SIM, but that's only 2G only. It's a model G700 TV Wi-Fi mobile phone. Micro SD card there. Does it have any date codes or anything on it? I wonder if it does. It's interesting to note that this one here has 2012 on it. So this, I mean, this was still relevant in 2012, but they had made a number of upgrades from this model since. So why was this one two years late to the party? Who knows? 
But there you go. It uh, doesn't say the month there, but yeah, 2012. It's really, really difficult to see, but there you go. 2012, it was it was made. So that is that is interesting. Otherwise, we have the little speaker grill there, which it's uh, maybe a 15 mil driver there, so it might pump out some good sound. Who knows? I've got my little decibel meter up there, so we can test the sound with good old Mick Gordon's rip and tear. Otherwise, uh, there's not much else to have a look at, so what I'll do, I'll put an SD card in there, and I will put a SIM card in here just just for the just for the sake of it, I guess. And we'll boot up this phone and see what it does. But first, first, ain't no TV phone without an antenna. Wee. Oops. All right, everything has been loaded up into the phone. Time to put this back cover back on. If it goes back on, I don't think it'll go back on. Maybe. Yes, it's back on. It's good enough. All right, I'm going to take the screen protector off it because I don't think it's necessary. Oh, maybe, you know what? We'll leave it on, and if it looks bad, I'll take it off. But here we go. Going to power it up, and I wonder what this... I wonder if... Number one, if it does have Wi-Fi. Number two, what specs are actually running under this, because this one is a 1 gigahertz Scorpion CPU with 578 megabytes of RAM and a 480 by 800 display. So it'll be interesting to see what this one does have. I'll have to tear it down, obviously. But here we go. Ray. That sounds um very authentic. It seems to look like it's running Android 2.3 or whatever this runs. Uh, obviously, that's not the case. First thing... Let's see. All right, let's open home. No, no service. Ooh, hang on. I want to see if it does have 3G. Don't think it will. No, I'd say... Okay, so I'd say this is only a 2G phone. Okay, so that came up pretty interestingly fast. <laughs> uh, okay. How's the touch work? Oh, oh, okay. So the, the the touch you have to sort of push into the screen and then pull up. Yeah, that that's not really. Uh, can I can I just use the volume buttons? Yay! I can use the volume buttons. That's a lot easier. Obviously, there is no optical trackpad, so that is a complete waste. So we got messaging, dial pad, camera, and player on the front screen. There, call. I I did I did press call, but okay. Well, the the. the Okay, so the touchscreen half works. Half. You can't pull the top down, I don't think. Nope. And you can scroll across to see some widgets. Can you move them around? No, oh, of course you can't. Why would you? Well, time to go through all the functions of this thing. Oh, God. All right, so messaging, dial pad, contacts, music. We will check that later. Camera, we will also check that later. Player, which is obviously a video player. Quick search, I would say. Let's go into settings. It'll be interesting to go into settings. Oh, okay. This looks like a Java operating system, as per usual. 3D sensor, on or off. Okay. Sound effects, audio effect. Yeah. Bass enhancement. Oh, we're going to have that on. Thank you very much. So that'll be interesting to see when I play uh, Rip and Tear later on to see what the sound is like. Or I could play something from No Copyright Sounds now, because that's probably better. But anywho, uh, security setup. Oop. Yep, phone lock, auto keypad lock. Yep, network setup. Okay, well, how's that? So what about Wi-Fi? So a bunch of input settings in here, which is not really useful. Pen calibration. Well, this doesn't come, come with a pen, so... No, I don't. I didn't want to do that. Hang on. Okay, I just calibrated that for the sake of it. I don't know why. Uh, dual SIM open. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Bluetooth. Power. Inquiry audio. It's what? Inquiry audio device. Okay. Remote control my device. Active devices. All that sort of stuff. I'm not going to be using Bluetooth, but there you go. Wi-Fi. Here we go. All right. Search for networks. No. Okay, how much? Okay, how do I put password in? This is going to be fun. Okay, so I've sat here playing around with this, and it doesn't seem to do anything. I can put in my network key, and then it just goes activated, then done, and doesn't do anything else. Unless there's, 
be no icon up the top? I don't know. Okay, so I've just went to the settings and it is supposedly connected. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's keep having a look then. We've got Java, which, what's, in, we got Opera Mini 5. Okay, let's open Opera and see if we can see anything. Dum -de dum God, I remember Java applications. Pfft. Yeah. Could not establish network connection. Please check if the date is set correctly. Oh. Well, that's that's probably helpful because the date is not correct on this phone. Hang on, I'll have to change the date and then we'll try it again. All right, trying Opera again after I've just changed the settings. And... Maybe. 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 No way. Oh, no way. <laughs> All right, let's let's see if I can go on YouTube with this thing. I like how they've copied the Android keyboard too, but it's not, not even close to feeling like one. Oh, whoa, this is, wow. This is amazing. Holy crap, that's, <laughs> oh, God. God, the Wi-Fi is actually working. Holy sh! How does how does this even work? All right, let's let's go onto here. Don't tell me this works. No, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't. Oh, watch video. Hang on. Watch video. Nah. You can browse the internet on this thing. <laughs> that is a first. That one of these things has Wi-Fi built into it. The one of the Java operating system ones has Wi-Fi built into it. Every other one I've looked at doesn't work. And this one, it works. It's just very primitive and doesn't really work well. But it, it's there it, and has Wi-Fi. <laughs> and to be honest, that was pretty s solid sort of thing. It was it, it loaded pretty fast. Put it this way, Wi-Fi works. Now I need to, there we go, terminate. Java terminating, there we go, yay. Well, that was interesting. eBuddy uh, Face Faceshin, I, su I would suppose it's called Faceshin, and QQ, QQ. I've seen that a lot of times. Uh, call center, probably call center. Uh, we have a file management thing. Okay, so we have tw <laughs> twenty-one megabytes free on the internal storage, and whereas the memory card is a two fifty-six with seventy-five meg free, so it's probably got a thirty-two meg ROM maybe built into it. God, all right. Profile, WAP, write a message, call history, TV. Go on, let's see what this does. I know what it's gonna do. It's exactly what I thought. Because it's not it's not digital, it's just analog. Radio, not really interested in that. eBuddy, I don't know what that is. Opera, game, gotta try games. Gotta try games. All right, so we've got Java. Oh, okay, so games, Mahjong. That's, that's, that's it? Really? Okay. What about motion games? Dice. Oh, it was interesting. Swiftly moving on, we have clock. Then we have books, which is a little WinRare archive by the looks of it. Calendar, photos, MMS, which is a Gmail icon. Wallpaper, email, video recorder. Oh, that'll be fun. Chat. Notas. It's not notes, it's notas. Okay. World clock, currency, voicemail, broadcast, recorder, slide that is it this is is it the steam icon? It's like half of it. Stopwatch, calculator, and we're back to the start. So it does have a lot of somewhat useful applications on here, somewhat. The phone is kind of fairly responsive. I mean the touch screen's iffy and I don't have a stylus for it, but you can use the volume buttons, that's that's just good enough. So what I think I'll do now is do a camera test and see if this here is an 8.1 megapixel camera. I don't think it is, but you never know. You never know. Actually, if I'm taking photos, I want to take a picture of the cracks here and see if they come up sharply or if it's just all blurred pixel light. Whatever. Alright, let's jump to the camera test. Okay, so the image size is 1280 by 1024, and the image quality can be high, and that's it. Okay, well, let's see how we go with that.
And this is the video recording test for the HTC Desire clone. As you can see, there's no optical image stabilization or anything like that. The colors look very off and washed out. There's no autofocus either. Um, let's just try and see if we can get any definition there. Doesn't look like it. I don't think it's a stereo setup either. It's just probably a normal microphone. It's probably very, very soft as well. Uh, otherwise, low frame rate looks pretty crap. Okay, so the camera test is done, and I would probably assume, and it's probably safe to assume, that it was terrible quality, and it's, yeah, I mean, this could only do 480p anyways, 720p with the software update, so if, if that's any better, I'll, I'll end up celebrating. Anywho, oh look, even, even the lock screen is very uh, Android looking, but it's not Android, it's the Java operating system. Okay, well, I guess it's time to do a speaker test. This will be fun. Okay, Rip and Tear is there. I know I should be using non-copyright sounds, but, you know, Rip and Tear just has a lot of bass and just guitars and a lot of distortion. So the bass enhancement is on, the equalizer is on normal, so I guess we'll just try that and see how it goes. Okay, here we go. Okay, so about 100 decibels that reached, roughly. Um, I wonder if I go into equalizer settings, if I can change that. Okay, and just quickly on base mode, we'll see if this does anything different. The answer is yes, it does. The last thing to do in the sound test is the play speed. I want to have it slow. I just want to see what it sounds like. What a work of art. So let's just try it on fastest. Come on. Man, that gets you in the mood. Whoa. That's a bit hectic there. There's not a lot to really say about this phone. It's a clone of this, and it doesn't run Android. It runs a Java operating system. The speaker is pretty meh. The camera is probably meh. The touchscreen is meh. The whole phone is simply meh. So, it's now time to finish up with looking at the phone and tear it down and see what's inside of this thing. Answer... It's a motherboard that's in here. We want to see what CPU it has, what RAM it has, etc, etc, etc. So let me do a quick jump cut, take this thing apart, and I'll start filming again when it's in pieces. So I shall be back. Good news. It's a 3.2 inch HVGA screen. I don't know what HVGA resolution is, but I'll have a look. Uh, bad news is I ripped the touchscreen. Oops. I can still function with it, kind of, sort of. Um, but in all honesty, I'm pretty much not going to use the phone anymore anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the mess there, and yeah, the little flex cable was here, and pretty much, once I pulled the case off, that ripped. So, meh, little spec sheet there. There's some screws holding down the speaker, so I'll take them off. In all honesty, I was just going to rip the speaker off, just so I can get to the components. It's just amazing that this thing actually had Wi-Fi. These here, I believe, are actual buttons. I think these actually press down, if you were to connect a contact to them like one of these little metal things, and press down on that, I believe something would happen. So maybe this was a Frankenphone after all. I... Your guess is all just as good as mine. Anywho, there's the speaker, which, yeah, about a 15 mil, I'd say. So it's time to pry up these little boards here and see what's underneath these. I'd say this would be the Wi-Fi area, and this would probably be the CPU and the flash. So, we have a MediaTek ARM MT6235BA. Then we also have a flash module there from Japan. And that's a TY8000-9000JMGF. That's a million words to say there. Um, I don't know where the flash module would be. Like, either that's a RAM module or a flash module. Either one. 
All right, we've got another chip here, which is a MediaTek MT592188A. I love how there's just a wire just soldered across there, like, you know, whatever. No, oh, well, this one doesn't have a chip in there, so there you go. Safe to assume I have destroyed this phone at this point in time. Oh, well. In the name of science. There goes that. There is a chip there, TLG1120P. No idea what that is. And I've got one last one to open, and then that's it. Okay, I'd say there'd probably be some Wi-Fi ones or something like that in there. Well, it's now in pieces now, and I can't get these back on without having to solder them, and I can't solder, so yeah, I'll pretty much just do research now and see what's actually in this phone. I'll put it back together as best as I can. Just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and put the battery back in and see if anything happens. I don't think anything will happen. I think it's dead. Never mind. It's still alive. So did I kill the touch screen? I probably did. I mean, it's no good to anyone anyways. Did I possibly kill the rest of it as well? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that I killed it. Oh well. At least I've had a look at it and had a look at the innards and stuff. Oh well. You can just go with the collection. If you want to know the specs of the device, it is listed over here. Feel free to have a pause and have a squiz and all that sort of stuff and you can see what's running inside of this device. But otherwise, I can't really say much more about this thing. I like doing these tech videos, they're fun. You know, I always like to see what's inside of these random things and, you know, you only come across, you know, one of these in your lifetime, so you may as well just take advantage of it, pull it apart, rip it apart, see what's inside of it, and then put it back together and, yeah, it never works again. Oh well, that was fun. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this very long video, even though I said it was going to be a quick video, because I ramble too much and talk about too many things, so I'm very, very sorry about that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, I appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next video, whatever that shall may be. Whatever that shall may be, that's 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 a great way to end this video. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Okay.